Hello and uh, good evening. And uh, we can go ahead to the next slide, uh, which should be the first one for me. Uh, my name is David Drews. Uh, I'm not in a gray t-shirt that looks very comfortable. I'm up here in my suit. I'm at the University of Nebraska at Omaha, not on the Lincoln Lancaster County planning staff. So uh, we are the population people and put a lot of numbers together. So we, at the bottom line, are a resource. So. Uh, if you ever need information, maybe even for your own neighborhood or specific um, community, if, if you're from one of the smaller towns around Lincoln, we can sure show you all sorts of different data um, to understand uh, your community and where we're going. So why am I here? Um, 10 years ago, as they were working on the kind of the 2040 plan, they asked me to do population projections to see where we were going. Fortunately, they've proven to be quite accurate, so they brought me around again uh, to give an update uh, this time um, so that we could see where we're going to be in 2050. And, you know, that accuracy may or may not have anything to do with me, per se, but just that Lancaster County has very sustainable and steady growth that, that we'll see. So, um, again, we're a resource, so we'll make all these slides available. Hopefully, they will show up well. I've never presented on a screen of this size before, okay? So I do about 25 presentations a year, so that's one every other week on average, uh, but never one quite in this setting. Everything from a little Kiwanis Club and a Rotary Club all the way up to uh, speaking to the governor and the state chamber. So um, demographics are what we do. So let's get started, go on to our next slide. So this first one's going to be just taking a look at Lancaster County's population over time. I'm gonna take a quick peek at the big screen. So that that's shows up pretty well. Again, it's hard to know. They said 28 point font minimum. You know, it's like, okay, well, I'll, I'll do the best. Usually we're like in 14 or something. So the black line is where we've been. That, those are actual numbers from the Census Bureau starting back in 1970, coming up to 2018 here. And then the red part is our projection um, kind of starting that. And if you notice, um, it pretty much looks like a line, straight line. You know, there's, there's not a lot of up and down or looking like a wave. It's just steady, consistent growth. And when you look at the annual numbers, it's always within a stone's throw of about 3,500 population increase per year for the county. So the, it, it's growing very consistently. You see the end number there at 2050 for about 440,000 population. So that's where we're gonna be. As David mentioned, we're at about 320 right now for the county, so that's a growth of 120,000 over these next 50 years. Um, it's pretty easy to remember, the county will be hitting 400,000 in 2040. So 440, uh, at least to me that's easy to remember, maybe not for everyone. Uh, but but you, know, you kind of use those patterns to see where we've been and where we're going. Uh, the projection itself uses migration rates, which are kind of a wild card. They go up and down with the economy, but we use kind of the trend level, what the county experienced in the 2000s, which is also very similar to the longer three or four decade average. So uh, the, using those numbers, that's our best guess. Could be a little higher, could be a little bit lower, but over time, we think that it will hit that trend um, more often than not. Okay, next slide, please. So when you talk about population, uh, it's pretty hard to not have some discussion about aging, okay? So who in here is a baby boomer? Okay, 1946 to 1964 birth year. Okay, so that is our, has been our predominant uh, population group over time. And just as changes happen with the boomers, there's just all sorts of effects. So this is a look at the population that will be 75 and older in the red line as compared to children under five in black. And what do you notice about the two lines? they cross, okay? So we're gonna have for the first time in local history, I, I would be sure of it, that we're gonna have more elders 75 and older than kids under five. So it kind of begs that question as you plan for development, you know, what kind of housing do you need for workforce? You know, do we, do we, does that suggest we need more elder care workers or more daycare workers? You know, so there's all sorts of ramifications to the numbers. And uh, I, hope, I always like to tell people, sit back, look at these slides like it's a movie and see how it, how it affects you and your work, you know, because it's different for everybody. Uh, but we can see that acceleration in the red line starting in about 2021, which is right when the first baby boomers start hitting 75. And then it accelerates from there. 
and you can see that it's going to be nearly 40,000 by the time we get up to 2050 versus starting in 2010 at only 15,000. So that's a pretty big jump, almost a triple um, over those 40 years. And you do see growth in the children under five, but it's a pretty slow and steady growth. So 2024 is kind of that crossover point where we will um, see the seniors kind of be a larger group than um, young children. Coincidentally, statewide, that cross is happening right as we speak. Either it happened in 2019 or 2020. So um, it's also a similar pattern for the state, but a few more younger uh, families, younger children here in Lancaster to kind of even that out. Okay, next slide. So when you have aging, um, one of the things that's inevitable, um, you have deaths. Okay, and uh, one of our key population growth components is from having more births than deaths. But as deaths go up, as you can see in the red colored line in the, in the left hand column, which is the figures for births versus deaths for white non-Hispanics, you can see that that population grew by about 17,000 just because there were more births than deaths. In each and every decade, as deaths kick higher, we're gonna see that level of what we call natural increase come down. So that's, that's falling there in the kind of the red column. If you go two columns to the right, you'll see another one for births versus deaths, and that's for the minority population. In the 2000s, growth there was about 6,000, so a fair degree less than what it was for whites. Um, but the, the minority natural increase is going to accelerate um, and, and approximately um, double, uh, if you look for what we expect here in the 2010s, from about 7,000 growth up to 15,000 by the time you get to the 2040s. So you see those two differing trends there. Um, the other couple of columns take a peek at net migration. That's the other way that the population changes. So it, it's really easy to be a demographer. You just have to understand births, deaths, and people moving in and moving away. That's all there is to it. Okay, so, so my job isn't too bad. Um, but again, we, we look at those numbers and you see the net migration among whites, it was positive, but only about 1,800 uh, people um, on net for the 2000s decade. In comparison, the minority population growth was almost 10,000, or right around 10,000. So almost 90%, um, almost you can see in the far right column are the percentages. Yep, you can read those numbers, hopefully. 85% um, of the net migration into Lancaster County was due to minority population groups. So anything besides um, white. So uh, we see that that's fairly steady over time. And again, as I mentioned, as white deaths kick higher and um, minority natural increase grows, you'll see that we shift from only about a quarter of our net population gains through natural increase from minority population all the way up to 85% by the time you get to 2050. So that is a change as well. Next slide. Just a couple more to go here. So this is putting the raw numbers of minority population growth into perspective. So I have a chart of this out on the display boards. So come check those out. Uh, our graphic designer did a really good job on those particular boards. So, so hopefully you can see the trends um, in a prettier way than this little table. But if you look, starting in 1990, we had about 13,000 minority population, and that doubled by the time you got to 2000. So you know, a double would have been to 26,000, and I was at 28 when you got to the 2000 census. So um, we continue to see that growth, and you can look at all the specific numbers, um, crossing over 100,000 minority population um, during the 2030s decade. Um, from where we're at here in 2020, with about 65,000 minority population, that's going to about double in 20 years, to up to 121,000 by the time we get to 2040. So a lot of growth, and it's, it's very consistent. If you look at that far right column and do the math, you know, it's pretty much um, increasing five percentage points per decade. So we'll be at 20% in 2020 and about 30% in 2040. So that's where that stands for minority growth. All right, next slide. This one's going to take a look at population growth over time, just comparing Lancaster County in black. Um, those are the actual numbers, and then the projected numbers on the right kind of have the cross hatch, so they're a little bit lighter. The red bars in the middle, those are Nebraska's growth rate. 
So what we see is that Lancaster County has approximately doubled the, the Nebraska growth rate in each and every decade. Uh, the 1980s, there was an especially large gap because we had the farm crisis in rural Nebraska during that time. Lancaster kind of plugged away and, and was able to grow 10%. Um, so, so you do see how much better Lancaster County is doing than the state as a, as a whole. That being said, we do see the growth rate slowing. And again, that's kind of the function of those deaths kicking higher, uh, like I mentioned. But even so, we still will gain about 40,000 people per decade, even as the rate slows down a little bit. And it happens both for the state and Lancaster County. So one of the things we do with data is try to compare it. So again, have a, have a sense of where Lancaster is relative to other places, because one number doesn't necessarily mean anything by itself, but comparing it to see that you're double the growth rate of the state is quite significant. Next slide. So this is taking a look at the kind of the ramifications of those differences in growth. So what is sh being shown here is the percent of the population of the state's population that's in Lancaster County. Okay, so if you start in 1990, we had about 11% of the state's minority population in Lancaster, and about 13.5% of the whole state's population was located here in Lancaster County. Since Lancaster County is growing quicker than the state, those numbers are going to trend upward. Um, so by the end of the period in 2050, we're going to have about 20% of the state's population right here in Lancaster County. So one out of every five state residents will be a Lancaster County resident. Um, you can see it's consistent across the two racial groups. And I think there's a lot of different potential ramifications for that, but the one that I put down here was kind of taking a look at representation in the unicameral. So currently, the Lancaster County has um, basically seven uh, senators, and then there's a couple partial districts that, that get up to their full total. And we expect, with the growth, that Lancaster County will get another um, unicameral senator here after the 2020 census. And by the time you get to 2050, there'll be two more additional senators. So again, you do the math, 10 out of 49, that's about 20%. Um, so that you, you can't escape the math on that. And it's going to be a relative positive for Lancaster County to have the um, policy being made for what's important to the local residents. OK, next slide. We also did household projections, and this is just one of, of many different things. Again, on the other board, you're going to see some highlights about um, persons per household and, and the number of households. Um, we expect to grow by 100,000 households over a couple points in time when you look at the board. So this is taking a look at one person living alone and what portion of Lancaster County's households are when one person is living by themselves. And this is a rising trend both um, locally and nationally. So more people are, are kind of by themselves. And in the circle is a look at maybe a special needs population, which are people 75 and older living alone. And you're going to see that that will more than double over the 2000s level. So think about if you're older and living alone, maybe your spouse has passed away. Um, there could be a fall or a, some other type of accident. Uh, you could be kind of lonely um, in that situation. Uh, you know, if you're a, maybe a male outliving your spouse, maybe you don't know how to cook, you know. You know or clean, maybe. Maybe that was that was wife's role. Um, so, so there are some speci special um, needs within that particular population group for people living alone, and uh, we'll just see where that goes. But the uptrend is in force. Again, as people age, people living alone does increase. It's about 50% for anybody 75 and older. The likelihood that they're going to live by themselves. So um, that that does accelerate, and, and we see that growth. So it's just one of the ideas of, of we can prepare for the households and the size of the households, what those households might need for maybe uh, wheelchair accessibility and those kinds of things as the population ages. I have one more slide, and we can go to it. And that is just to give you a plug for the uh, 2020 census. So again, we are partners in that. I have some resources out on the table. Um, but the main thing is if you know of anyone who's looking for a good paying part-time flexible work job, have them go to the 2020 census job site. It's really good for students as far as part-time flexible work. 
They're paying about $22 an hour for part-time work because it's really hard to find workers right now. So Lancaster County is about 80% of their goal for census applicants, but a lot of other counties like Saline County just next door, they're only at about 30% of their goal for applicants. So uh, jobs push, uh, it's one of the big concerns as far as having an accurate census. Um, so if you know anybody who can spread that message for census jobs, that'd be much appreciated. Otherwise, the census boils down to money and power. So for every person that's there, you get so many federal dollars that come back to the state. So we don't want to miss people. And then it kind of has the political representation that I referenced earlier. So that is it for me. Um, I will be by the boards to answer any questions. And again, just remember that we're a resource. If there's something you want to see, I'll definitely give you a business card and uh, be able to connect because um, we like to help out wherever we can. So back to David. Thank you, David. I don't think there's a planner in the room that thinks your job is easy. So thank you for all your work. Uh, just to kind of think about that for a minute, we have very high confidence in the work that David does. Um, and those numbers are, uh, if they're anything like what we had done 10 years ago, they are extremely accurate and we feel very good about those. And we're gonna base a lot of our discussions on those numbers. So thank you for your work. Um, I'll finish off this portion of the evening by thanking you, thanking you for coming. Um, you're here because you care about your community. It's very evident. Um, we're happy to have you here. We hope that you stay engaged with this process throughout the next 18 or so months. Uh, it's important, like I said earlier, to hear from you and others in the community. It helps make a better vision for the, for the community and a better plan for everyone. And I also wanna mention that please eat the, 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 the cookies. Um, the planning department doesn't need to bring all that back tomorrow. Um, so please take advantage of that. And we will all will be out there. The staff will be out in the other room to answer your questions. And again, thank you very much for this evening. I appreciate it.